even as inflation continues to come down towards the Fed's 2% target, they have decided recently to not be in a rush to cut interest rates, to keep interest rates at currently 5.5%. And even if they are cutting, they are cutting very slowly with about an estimated three rate cuts for the year. Now think about it, in the last 10 years or more than 10 years since the financial crisis of 2009, the Fed funds rates has been close to zero except a slight brief increase in 2017-2019. So the current interest rates at 5.5%, rates are relatively high right now and I think they will still remain relatively high in the next few years moving forward. Now, I think that's fantastic news. That's great news, especially if you are an income investor. You're investing into dividend stocks, into REITs, into bonds and money market funds. Now, of course, uh, income investing isn't for everyone, but especially if you are someone who is getting older, you want to have more and more of your portfolio into income stocks or bonds or money market funds because it provides you with a steady stream of passive income. Those of you who are in my UIP subscription for many, many years, you know that I have got my capital gain portfolio where I generate 20, 30, 40% returns a year. Capital gain with very little dividends, but at the same time, I have got a separate dividend portfolio where the objective is not to get very high gains. In fact, the gains are quite low, but the objective of my dividend portfolio is to invest in bonds, dividend stocks and REITs to just get steady uh, passive income from dividends and interest. And right now my income portfolio generates enough passive income, interest and dividends to cover my annual expenses. You can see in the last one year, it generated uh, about $345,000 in passive income. Actually, it's a lot higher than that. It's actually over 450,000 because a lot of the dividends are not captured in this uh, my DBS account because they're classified under reduction of nominal capital, right? But this only classifies dividends and, and interest. Year to date, you can see that it's generated already close to 100,000 in dividends and interest. As always, I show people my accounts in full transparency, not to you know impress you, but to hopefully inspire you that yes, you can achieve financial freedom out of the red race. You can be financially free with the right kind of investing. And income investing is one way to generate that passive income. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on something that I don't usually talk about, which is how do we take advantage of the current relatively high interest rates uh, to build a solid income portfolio. So the first and easiest way to generate uh, passive income from the high interest rates is to invest into money market funds. So what are money market funds? They are basically a kind of mutual fund that invests in highly liquid near-term instruments. So these instruments include cash and equivalents, high credit rating, debt-based securities with short-term maturities. Example, US Treasury bills. So money market funds are very easy to buy and these are some of the more popular ones. Uh, one of them, for example, is the Fidelity Money Market Fund, ticker symbol SPRXX. So how do you buy these money market funds? Well, there are many ways to buy it, and the simplest way is to buy through a broker like Interactive Brokers. So I use Interactive Brokers, just key in the ticker symbol SPRXX and you can buy this money market fund. The great thing about these money market funds is that they trade always at $1. It's fixed, they are the, the so-called the share price is always equal to the NEV per share, which is $1. It never changes, it, it's always $1, right? And currently, the uh, yield or the interest uh, that you're getting is 5.04%, which is okay, not too bad, all right? Uh, but of course, any kind of mutual fund, there are some uh, expense ratios or management fees, but it's relatively low. It's only 0.42% a year. Great thing about these money market funds is that if you're not a US citizen or US resident like me, there's no withholding tax, all right? So those are money market funds and they pay you uh, dividends or interest uh, every single month, as you can see. Uh, and these are, again, the things that they hold in the fund itself. So again, this is the easiest way to take advantage of high interest rates, money market funds. The second way is to go directly and to buy US government bonds 
notes and bills. And what's the difference between bonds, notes, and bills? It's basically the time frame, right? So bonds are long-term 20 to 30 years. And notes are kind of like two to 10 years. Bills are less than one year. And you guys know that right now we have got an inverted yield curve, which is great, which means that the shorter you invest, uh, the more interest you get. The longer you invest, the less interest you get. So it's to our advantage to focus on US government bills, which expire, mature in less than one year because that gives you the highest interest rate. So currently, if you look at the treasury yields, you can see that you know, 12 month uh, tr US government treasury bill gives you 5%, which is similar to the money market fund, which you can just put to the money market fund a lot easier, right? Uh, six months bill, 5.32%, and the three month bill, 5.36%. So we're in a bizarro world, right? So the shorter term, the more interest that you get. And uh, relatively low starting, right? To invest in uh, US bonds, bills, and notes, the minimum investment is uh, just $1,000. And again, how can you buy? Many, many ways. Simplest way, buy through a broker like Interactive Brokers. By the way, I'm not promoting Interactive Brokers. It just so happens that I use Interactive Brokers. So that's another way. Um, and again, you can just go to Interactive Brokers and you can you know, use their bond screener to screen for all the different bonds maturing at different times and you can just buy them. Now, some people have this question, uh, is there a risk in buying these US Treasury bills? Well, there's zero risk if you hold to maturity. Now, remember that when you buy a bond, there's what we call interest rate risk. If interest rates increase, the price of the bond falls. When interest rates fall, the bond price increases. So if you sell the bond before maturity, you could make a loss if the bond price falls as interest rates rise. So there's a risk. You could lose money if you sell it before maturity. But if you hold a bond to maturity, then there's zero risk. Because at maturity, you always get back the face value of the bond, plus all the interest that you earn. So that's the thing to understand about uh, bonds. Now, if you're from Singapore, like me, of course, you also have Singapore government bonds you can buy, like the Singapore Savings Bond and the regular SGS Singapore bonds. Um, of course, they pay lower interest because they're in Singapore dollars. So right now, you're getting something like, like about, you know, three point, if I'm not wrong, like 3.5% on the Singapore bonds. And I do have some Singapore bonds as well, right? So another idea. Another thing you could do is to buy corporate bonds. But of course, for most of the corporate bonds, you need a lot of capital. Usually the minimum investment in a corporate bond is 200,000 uh, or a quarter million dollars per pop, right? Although now there are some corporate bonds that do offer to the retail investors at $1,000 minimum investment, but usually those are fewer options. Most of the corporate bonds, you need 200,000 to 250,000. In fact, I just bought this bond uh, two days ago, right, from my bank, right? Um, this is a UOB bond priced in US dollars, and it's yielding about over 5% yield to maturity. It matures in one year. So when I buy this bond, I hold to maturity, there's zero interest rate or market risk because at the end of the maturity i get back the two hundred thousand dollars face value plus all the interest i collect along the way there's only a risk if i sell before maturity then there's a uh, interest rate risk now of course there's a default risk if uob goes bankrupt i don't get my money back right but uob is one of the strongest banks in the world so you know to me the default risk is relatively not there so how do you purchase these bonds? Well, there are many ways. You can buy it directly from your bank. You can buy it from Fund Supermart, from Bond Supermart, or again, Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is like a supermarket. They sell everything. But again, like I said, for corporate bonds, usually it's for accredited investors where you have got you know, a big amount of capital to deploy. So, so far, we've talked about money market funds, uh, US government bonds, Singapore government bonds and corporate bonds. All these are known as fixed income. Now, the problem with fixed income is that there's reinvestment risk. 
So what does that mean? That means right now you can invest at an attractive 5%, right? But it's not going to last for very long because the Fed is going to start cutting interest rates later part of the year and cut more next year and the year after that. So when your bonds mature, when your money market funds uh, you want to sell out and you want to reinvest, you can't get 5% anymore. You know, end of the year or next year, you find that when you reinvest the bonds and, and corporate bonds or government bonds, you will only get uh, maybe 4% and then 3% and then very, very little, right? So that's the reason if you look at my um, income portfolio, not much of it is into fixed income. I do have some fixed income, but not very much because I know that this 5% won't last very long. So the majority of my income portfolio is invested into dividend stocks and REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. So why do I prefer dividend stocks and REITs compared to purely fixed income? Because there's no, well, I wouldn't say there's no, but there's much lower reinvestment risk. Because unlike fixed income, remember that for fixed income, the interest is fixed, okay? But when you invest in high quality dividend stocks, and high quality REITs, the dividends that you receive will increase over time. They will keep increasing year after year. Plus, dividend stocks and high quality REITs, you also get the advantage of capital gains. Whereas for bonds, you don't get that much capital gains. In the last two years, because interest rates have been going up, you find that dividend stocks and REITs, their share prices have come down quite a bit in the last two years which is good for investing now because you get to buy them at undervalued levels when their dividend yields are relatively high. So once you lock in these high yields and once interest rates fall, what's going to happen? The dividend stocks and REITs, the share price is going to rebound. So not only will you get the rebound in the share price, you get a capital gains um, a benefit in the next few years, but at the same time, you lock in the high dividend yields that you're buying at right now. So what do I look for in a good dividend stock? Now, first, I find a lot of investors, the mistake they make is when they buy dividend stocks, they just focus on the high dividend yield itself. And that is very, very dangerous. Now, remember that the dividend yield of a stock is equal to the dividends per share they pay a year divided by the current share price. And again, the common mistake that people make is they go for stocks that have the highest dividend yield because it looks really attractive. Like they say, wow, this stock has a dividend yield of 7% and the dividend yield is going up, so let's buy the stock. Big mistake. Why? So is it possible that a stock, the dividends they pay falls every year? Is that possible they pay less and less dividends a year? but the dividend yield is very high. Is that possible? Yes, why? Because if the dividend per share is falling, but the share price is falling even more than the dividend per share, that will cause the yield to be very high. But you don't want that, right? You don't want to buy a stock where they pay you less dividends every single year. Big mistake. So the most important thing is, write this down, is when you buy dividend stocks, not only should the dividend yield be attractive, but more importantly, always ensure that the dividends per share is growing consistently. How do you know? Look at the history. You want to make sure that the last five years, the last 10 years, the dividends per share is growing consistently. And in the long run, the share price is also increasing. So when dividends per share is increasing and share price is increasing and you get an attractive yield, that's a good dividend stock. And of course, you have to ensure that the business itself is able to grow the revenues, profits, and free cash flow to support the increased dividends per share and that the business has got a strong balance sheet. So generally, when I buy dividend stocks, I avoid commodity stocks, I avoid property developers, I avoid oil and gas companies because they're in very cyclical Businesses where during a recession, they usually have to cut their dividends. You don't want companies to cut their dividends during bad times. You want to make sure that even in the worst of times, they're able to keep raising their dividends. And so you want to invest in more defensive sectors like healthcare, for example, consumer staples, utilities, technology, and um, 
financial stocks with very strong balance sheets. So let me give you an example of a dividend stock that looks attractive, but I don't think it's very attractive. And one of the examples would be AT&T, a telecommunication stock listed in the US market. So at first glance, if you look at AT&T, by the way, this is from Guru Focus, the, the platform which I use a lot of, uh, you can see that their current dividend yield is 6.3%. So you may say, wow, it looks very attractive, right? Every $100, I get $6 in dividends. Yes, but take a look at the history of the dividend growth. In the last five years, the dividends have not been growing. The dividends per share has been falling at a rate of a 12% decline in dividends. So you're getting less and less dividends every single year. And not only that, but the share price has also been going down in the long run. So these are the kind of stocks that you know I want to avoid. I would rather invest in a dividend stock with a lower starting dividend yield, but a high dividend growth rate compared to a stock with a high starting dividend yield, but a low or negative growth rate. So let me give you an example. Let's take a look at this hypothetical stock. By the way, there is actually a stock like that, which I'm going to show you in a while, which I bought quite a number of years ago. So this first stock, the dividend yield right now is 4%. Now you may say 4%, it's not very exciting, doesn't look very attractive, but historically the dividends have been growing at 10% a year. The dividends per share is growing 10% a year and the share price in the long run is also going up. So even though the starting dividend yield is only 4%, but over the long run, it will compound into a high yield based on your initial capital. So here's an example. So let's imagine that this stock that you buy, uh, the current share price at the first year is $50. And when you buy it, the dividend yield is 4%. So what's 4% times $50? It's $2 dividends per share, right? Okay, now you hold this stock for let's say five years. And again, on average, the dividends are growing at 10% a year. So from $2 dividend per share, grows at 10%, the next year it becomes 220, 242, 266. So can you see what I'm saying? The dividends are growing consistently, okay? So after one year, what's happening? After one year, you are now getting $2.20 dividend per share. If you divide that by your initial cost, what happens to your yield on cost? It becomes 4.4%, right? And the next year, you're getting $2.42 dividends, but you divide that by your initial cost, your yield on cost becomes 3.6%. You can see that by year five, your dividend yield based on your initial capital has grown to 6.4%. So the point I'm making is that even if the starting yield is low, but the dividends are growing, it doesn't matter because after a couple of years, your yield on your initial capital will become quite high, all right? And of course, when a, a, a company is able to grow their dividends, you can bet the share price will go up as well. So the share price, as imagine, is also growing at 10%. So not only are you getting a higher and higher yield on capital, but you're getting that share price appreciation as well, all right? Now, on the other hand, let me show you the opposite, a lousy dividend stock like AT&T, this is an example like AT&T, right? Where initially, wow, I got a good starting dividend yield, but the dividends are not growing, the dividends are declining. So when you first buy, again, let's say the share price is $50, you're getting a 6% um, uh, dividend yield, so you're getting $3 in dividends. But over the years, the dividend gets cut by 10% because the business is not doing well, the revenue is going down, the profits are going down, the company's losing market share, right? So you're getting less and less dividends. And by the end of five years, you're getting $1.77. And if you divide that by your initial capital, your yield on your capital drops to 3.5%. So you may say, Adam, uh, can you give me an example of that first one you showed me, the nice one, right? Yeah, this is a stock I've been holding for quite a number of years and it's called CME. CME is a financial stock and they own one of the biggest options exchanges. Now, why did I buy this stock? Because I like to buy companies where I use the service myself. So every day I'm trading options, as you guys know. 
when you trade options, the options go through an options exchange. And CME is one of the, the biggest options exchange in the US market. So you can see that currently the dividend yield is 3.99%, uh, about, about 4% dividend yield. By the way, I bought it a few years ago at an even higher yield, right? But anyway, now it's 4% yield because the share price has gone up quite a bit. But look at that. In the last 10 years, the dividends have been growing at 7% a year. The last five years, the dividends grew at 16% a year. So while this stock may not go as fast as Microsoft or Nvidia or those high growth stocks, which I own in my, in my growth portfolio, but this is a very good dividend stock because it gives you increasing dividends every year with reasonably good capital gains. If you look at a chart of CME, group, which is the stock I just talked about, over the last 10 years, you can see that the share price has gained 186%. Now again, that's not very exciting compared to Nvidia or Microsoft and all that's a lot higher, right? But again, this is not just for capital gains, it's for dividends. Now this 186% capital gain doesn't include the dividends. If you adjust for dividends, you click this button here, adjust for dividends, Look what happens from 186%, if I adjust for dividends and you include the dividends reinvested, boom, it's 347% return with dividends invested. So you can get very nice uh, passive income plus pretty good growth with the right kind of dividend stock. Now there's one problem with investing in US listed dividend stocks. You have to pay tax on dividends. If you're a non-US citizen, you have to pay 30% withholding tax. And that's why I don't really like to buy US stocks for dividends. I do have a bit, but not that much. I buy US stocks more for capital gains because capital gains are tax-free for people like me in Singapore, but I've got 30% tax on dividends, which I don't like, right? So if you look at my income portfolio, most of the dividend stocks I own are Singapore-listed stocks because Singapore stocks are tax-free, dividend tax-free. But out of all the Singapore stocks, there are not many which are very good, but there are very few. And I'll share with you one of them, which is my favorite. I've been holding this for many, many years, and it has made me a lot of passive income every single year, and it is DBS Bank. Singapore has got three banks, DBS, UOB, OCBC. I own all three banks in equal proportion. And to me, they are great dividend stocks. So for example, if you look at DBS Bank, all right, currently the dividend yield uh, based on next year's uh, uh, dividends is actually 6%. Very attractive, 6% dividend yield. And not only that, but the dividends have been growing consistently for the last 10 years. DBS dividends in the last 10 years grew at 12% a year. In the last five years grew at 5% a year. In the last three years grew at 20% a year. And Last year, in one year, it grew 25% dividend growth, all right? Fantastic. In fact, you can see in my income portfolio, DBS Bank makes up the biggest allocation in my dividend income portfolio. Now, I'm not saying go buy you know, these banks right now. I wouldn't buy it right now uh, because currently it is slightly overpriced. So you can see, for example, on my uh, charts over here, uh, for DBS Bank, the fair value or the intrinsic value is actually about $31.60. That's the fair value, right? And currently it's selling at about $35. So it's a bit overpriced right now. So I bought a lot of it during this uh, 2020 crash. I bought a lot here. And uh, when it went down over here, I also bought here when it went below the fair value. So ideally you want to buy near the fair value. Um, right now it's overpriced, so I'll wait uh, for the next retracement to add more shares to these banks. Now, besides the Singapore listed banks, I've also been adding recently to some of the high quality Singapore REITs or real estate investment trusts. Now, REITs have dropped a lot in the last two years, the share price because of the very high interest rate going up. But once interest rates start to come back down, I think that the REITs would rebound very strongly and currently, uh, they offer very attractive dividend yields as well. But again, one must be very careful and only buy the very high quality uh, real estate investment trust. Now, if you're interested in me talking more about REITs, do leave a comment. 
uh, below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a video just talking about some of the REITs, which I think uh, are high quality and what are some of the key things to look at when you invest in REITs. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, do subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Kuhl and may the markets be with you.